What are the key considerations when purchasing an electric outboard? Well, it depends upon uh, the, the, the application and the usage. Uh, for example, the smaller outboards of our travel series between one and three horsepower with an integrated battery, they're usually used uh, for tenders or as an auxiliary drive for day sailors everywhere in the world. The larger motors, our crew series between five and eight horsepower and our uh, deep blue series between 40 and 80 horsepower has generally two applications. One uh, is the use on lakes where the use of combustion engine is restricted. Uh, and secondly, they're used by professional users uh, who use the motors every day and want to save money by going electric. Tell me about the key improvements in electric outboard technology in the last two years. Uh, well, basically, I'd like to uh, mention two developments. The first one is uh, the entry, uh, the market entry of our Deep Blue uh, high power electric system. Um, it's the first industrially developed and manufactured system that meets all the relevant safety standards uh, and is the only system that is properly insurable in Central Europe uh, due to this. The second uh, development uh, is often talked about is the improvement of battery technology. Basically over the last 20 years we see an improvement of battery technology by 5 to 10% uh, in energy density and in cost. Tokido now also offers a propulsion system with combustion power. How does that work? We're developing a hybrid system uh, around the existing components of our deep blue system. Uh, and in this hybrid system, we are generating energy on the one hand by hydro generation, turning the propeller under sail, by solar power. Uh, and uh, if we cannot harvest enough energy from renewables, we use a diesel generator. The electricity and power that we generate from these three sources we make available to power everything on board from the air condition up to propulsion.